I went from Bitcoin to Austrian economics and then low time preference. And now that changed everything from, from sleep, exercise, and diet. Bitcoin is the infinite game. It is something that is way, way beyond us. It's, it's bigger than us. The longer someone holds Bitcoin, the more they tend towards getting healthier. They tend towards more their passion, more what they actually want to do. And not like, I just do that because I'm scared of what might happen if I change anything. There's a fundamental issue with our system. Even if we give it away to somebody for free, creating it is not free. And executing on that plan is not free. There, there's no free lunch. You developed a, a Bitcoin game, and I think uh, it would be interesting to, to talk about Bitcoin game theory <laughs> in, in the starting All right. <laughs> uh, about, about, about that. Um, interesting question. Is is Bitcoin changing the rules of the game or is Bitcoin a whole new game? I, well, I think it's doing both. I, I think it's a whole new, it is a whole new game. And I, and I still think a lot of people who just don't, that just don't understand what's changing yet. They don't understand the magnitude of, of what it is. People in the space, obviously, we sound like we have our laser-eyed cult thing going on and, and people are all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But once you see it, you can't you can't unsee it. But as you introduce that to a world that doesn't understand it, they're trying to interpret it through their the lens as the world is as they see it, the, the lens of the world as they learned it, the fiat world. And and so it's it's slowly chipping away and interrupt and disrupting um, disrupting industries, disrupting money, obviously. So it is going to disrupt things. Um, but I do think it's because it's a whole new game and we've, they're, they're in the same environment. We're all humans. This is, this is, we're living. And so people have to react to that. And initially they're going to react to, to it with whatever way that they know, whatever way that they see the world until they get to a point where they see something different and they open up and then they can join our cult. <laughs> I, I love also the the incentives of, of that, because like if, if you're in the, in the Bitcoin game, you have so like your your incentive is so much better than if you are playing in in that fiat game. If if we like actually like imagine there's like I don't know two two different games going on on a playground and uh, the one game is just so much more fun long term than the other one. Percent, um, and it it does change in a lot of ways. I mean, it's it it changes more than in the U.S. A lot of people want to focus on the investment side of it. Obviously, if you're coming at it from a human rights standpoint, that's a whole other aspect of it um but it's it's going to disrupt things like the energy industry for example it's going to be completely changed with it and it, it's just it's going to take time for different different groups to see it on a personal note i know for me i i went from bitcoin to austrian economics and then low time preference and now that changed everything from from sleep exercise and and diet of course it's disrupting it's disrupting all of those things but maybe not just maybe not like in your face like i just hit you between the face and say here's a new way of doing money it's it's impacting the way you think and then as you approach food and 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 diet and education and all these other areas it it has the secondary tertiary effects so uh in, in that way it's going to disrupt just about everything how, how has bitcoin impacted uh your, your life so far so so uh let me break that up into a couple couple things on the professional side. So I was in the army for the first five years of my career, got out, went to business school. And that's where I met Tali and she was going to be an investment banker. And I was going to be a management consultant. Um, 9-11 happens. We start having kids. We have four children and we, she wants to homeschool. So I found myself in an op a fiat operational role or roles. And she was at home raising the, raising the, the, the kids up until 2022. So in 2022, that's when we decided all the kids were done. She had taken the homeschooling thing all the way through the K through 12 equivalent for homeschooling. And it was a matter of putting our, our money and our time where, where our mouth was. So we told the kids as they were growing up, you could do anything, you could be an entrepreneur, you can do all this stuff. And, and I had lost my uh, my position was eliminated in the company that I was in. I was vice president of logistics. And we had to make a choice. Do we go back to this to these roles that I did not enjoy and go and be at the whim of somebody else? 
or now the kids are done, do we make a decision and we do we move forward and be that that expression about be the change that you want in the world? Do we do we go for it? And so it was two years ago that we went full time on free market kids, and that's then now that's branched out into into courses and books and podcasts and, and, and other things. So that's on the career side, it, it, it changed. On the personal side, that's also pretty significant because when I was in the fiat roles, I was never doing anything that would, that I, that I was passionate about. I was never, never, I never felt fulfilled. And so going down the entrepreneur path has a lot more volatility, a lot more emotional volatility as you're trying to, figure out how to, to make it as an entrepreneur. So stress level in, incredibly high, high time preference stress, just through the roof. On the other hand, I have never met such incredible people and it didn't matter where they came from. Everybody's values were very similar. And so we've, we've now traveled, we've been to homeschooling conferences at Bitcoin conferences. We've been, we, we've done things we just never thought we would do. I never thought I'd be on a podcast, let, let alone the fact that Tali and I would would have our own podcast like this. These were just things that I never would have imagined. So the personal fulfillment now is very, very high. And along with that, also, as we got into the, again, I mentioned earlier with the low time preference, I have, I have changed things in terms of what I focus on with sleep on what I eat, um, reduce alcohol, just there's a whole bunch of things physically that I've done for myself as, as well. And I know that kids are still watching, even though they're done with school, they're watching Tali and I work together. A lot of couples are, they hit hard times and they might get divorced and, and there's other things and they're watching their mom and dad do something together for and do what they believe in. And so it, it's just so much more fulfilling. It's more fulfilling on a, on a, a career basis, as a, as a family basis, on a personal basis, and the people that I'm meeting. <clears throat> and then we look at the the impact that we think we're going to have. So we have these long time, low time preference goals of what we want to accomplish. And the whole thing about free market kids is it's all about if, if we're able to get rugged by this fiat system, we have two MBAs, Ivy League schools, and we get rugged by this fiat system. What are we going to teach the kids? Like, what are we going to help them with? Right. And then once you start to go down the Bitcoin rabbit hole and you start to study these other areas and you realize the impact on and everything. Uh, endless wars on what's going on with food. You just pick your favorite topic, and and then you realize this this is so much bigger than ourselves. So your your initial question was: Is Bitcoin a different game? Bitcoin is the infinite game. It is something that is way way beyond us. It's bigger than it's bigger than us. And there's something very fulfilling knowing that we are doing something that's going to make a positive impact on other people. Right? It's not just our own kids. It's going to be whoever we teach through our games. It's whoever we can reach through our courses or books. It's the, the, the impact is part of a, a thing that's much, much bigger than ourselves. And, and I don't, you can't get any more low time preference than that, than to just look super low. <laughs> in the future, the next generation, the generations after that, the things that we're working on now and trying to help with adoption and try to help people understand it. Uh, whether it's veterans or women or kids or whatever it is, that that is very very fulfilling, knowing that you're part of a bigger a bigger purpose. I, lo I love that a lot, and I I see that when I go into the Bitcoin community, there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of like we're looking forward to the future, and then when you see outside of the Bitcoin community, there's a lot of we are scared of the future. We like we we don't look forward to the future. They like they they are like living in the moment and not like, oh yeah, bit uh, the, the the world is great and in five years it will be even better. Like but in Bitcoin it's actually like that. What what, what role did that uh, hope and that security in that I don't know that 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 orange bright light <laughs> shining from above. Uh, <laughs> what role did that play in the decision of like being an entrepreneur, making a bold decision, and and not going the the secure round? I I think so. Part of it, I, I wish I could say that I just had this great insight and I like this you know some kind of genius moment, and I can see it. Sometimes you just need to start first, and then after you go through it, you can kind of see it with a, a different perspective. So in hindsight, I can say things like, we didn't want to be part of the old system. 
at the at the very moment I was making those decisions, it was more of a, of a decision of yes or no, are we going to commit to doing something different? And then you have to have the courage to go through that next step. And then as you're doing that, you you make a ton of mistakes, you figure things out, but you're building up your your capacity to do things. And then you look back, and then your 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 confidence has gone up because you're saying, look what I just did. And so it was like these series of little steps. We we were committed to what we were going to do, went through some kind of discomfort or challenge as we we would things would not work out. The the sales wouldn't work out at a conference or whatever it is. Something something or whatever disappointment. And then you come back to it, and now you look back and you say, Well, now you have a whole series of things that we've done over two years that you're just like, wow, how in the world did we get all that stuff done? And then your your confidence is at another level and it opens up yet a whole new set of opportunities for you that you didn't even dream that you had uh, previously. So I, I don't have, I don't know, I don't think I'm answering your question exactly, but there, there wasn't this this light bulb moment that said, ah, Bitcoin, and then I just, everything was clear. It was more of a, a series of steps, trying things, some things work, some things doesn't. You get through it, and then each with each one of those steps, you're you're you realize that you're growing. You're growing not only in your understanding of how things work with Bitcoin, um, but you're growing this community. You're growing this set of experiences, and that's it's that's it was a more of a baby step type of growth to get to where we're at. It was not this light bulb moment and. You know, I saw the light and <laughs> everything was good after that. Um, it was, but it's been, and then once I see it though, I, I'm just, I can't wait to share it with other people. I can't wait to try to help other people who, whatever stage of life they're in, it doesn't, it could be a physical thing. It could be, Hey, you, you really gotta look at your diet. You don't realize what's going on with the incentives and the money to, to put seed oils and other stuff in this food. You don't, do you realize what you're doing to yourself? You know, just, it could be something small like that. It could be bigger picture. It could be, hey, I want to, I don't know, not only do I want to end the Federal Reserve, I want to end the Department of Education, right? There's like these bigger, more philosophical, political type of things that uh, I would like to help be part of. So it's, um, it, it just depends on the context of who I'm talking to, but it's, uh, it's so exciting. There's so many different areas to get into and you know, every day you just get up and you're like, okay, what am I going to work on? How, how am I going to move this forward? And uh, it's pretty exciting. So Absolutely. And I think that's something that I really uh, saw in, in Bitcoiners life. Like uh, the, the longer someone holds Bitcoin, the, the more they tend towards getting healthier, uh, which, which means not only like from a diet and exercise standpoint, but also like just from a decision standpoint, because they get more secure, they get more uh, confident and they, they tend towards more their passion, more what they actually want to do and not like, oh yeah, I, I just do that because I'm scared of what might happen if I change anything. <laughs> so well, uh, that, that I see a lot actually in Bitcoiners. Yeah, we see the same thing. We, we see the same type of trends. Uh, we went to, um, so I went to a game conference because we, we have games, but we've been to a lot of Bitcoin conferences. And then you can you can actually just see it with the people walking by. If you're at a Bitcoin event, the the the, the average physical fitness, just not that you can tell what's going on the inside, but their average physical fitness from the outside. And then you go to a, we went to a game conference and people are leading very different lifestyles with their food and exercise, sleep, etc. It's not only do we pick it up in our conversations with people, like just, it comes up what you just described. It comes up. So it, that, that theme just runs uh, all the time. We always see that theme, but even if you didn't talk to someone, you just, you go to different kind of events. You can, you can just look at the people and observe how they behave, how they look, what they're eating. It just, you can actually see it. It's, 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 it's a, uh, it's it's eye opening in terms of, uh, and then you say all these health problems we have. My God, they they we already know what the answer is. <laughs> like we can we can stop this. We don't have to have. I don't know. Anyway, I get, it's it, I, I'm just trying to agree with you. It, it is uh, we definitely see the same thing. So. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating because, because yeah, you, you have a Bitcoin game. So obviously you are at Bitcoin conferences and at, at games conferences. Uh, never thought about that because then you see really nicely the, 
uh, you, you are the the constant because you and uh, your proof and what, what are you doing is 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 the same thing basically yeah. <laughs> in both conferences. Um, but the mission is maybe a little bit different. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, the audience is then a complete different one because uh, at game conference, I imagine uh, you get a lot of questions of like, oh, what what is Bitcoin? <laughs> like, uh, why, why game around Bitcoin and stuff like that? Uh, mm -hmm. And then of course, like the the, the changes and the differences between a, a pre coiner or a, a audience and a yeah, Bitcoin audience. Yeah, did you? I, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember if you and Tali talked about the the experience we had when we go to homeschooling conferences. Same thing. Like right? it's still it's still us. Still it's still this overlap. We want to talk about money literacy. We want to talk about Austrian economics. We want to talk about Bitcoin. And if if I'm repeating this, you just stop me so that you know we don't we don't have to go over material you already have. But if I'm at, if I'm talking to another Bitcoiner and they they have young kids or they're thinking about having kids and I and you say self custody education, they can I, I can get I can convince almost any Bitcoiner to homeschool, or that homeschooling is a good thing. Separation of education and state, the self custody piece, just there's so many similarities on there. But when you go to a homeschooling conference, it's still us, still the same same people, <laughs> but they they see the Bitcoin and they they think you're a scam. They don't know what to do with it. They, they, and be, so, uh, you know, I, I, cause you guys, I mean, depending on what country and homeschooling is not even legal. So I don't know. I'm not sure where you're at. If it's uh, Aust Austria and, uh, uh, I don't know how, how it's possible. I, I think it's actually not possible entirely. I think you, you can do it somehow, but you still have to be connected to that. I talked with someone yeah. uh, like a few weeks ago, but uh, I didn't remember exactly, but it, it's not really possible. Like you have, have to be very connected with the yeah. <laughs> education system. Well, we talked to um, a Bitcoiner. She, she's from Germany and she said she just left. It's illegal to homeschool. So the, but you, you go to them and they have in the U S anyways, that their understanding of what money is, is Dave Ramsey. I'm going to do your budget and try to get out of debt. It doesn't account for the, the inflation of the money supply and what that does at all. So it's a, it's more like a budgeting type of thing, which if money's only slowly losing value, okay, not, not a bad set of things to learn, but it completely misses the main things that Bitcoiners are looking at with. There's a fundamental issue with our system. There's a there are fundamental issues. So the the problem in that setting is we, we've got multiple layers. First, I have to like they don't the awareness of what money what's going on with money is different than what they're they're used to. So then you and then you're going to say that there's there's a there is another way. Look at this. Here's here is what Bitcoin can do. And then by the way, here's free market kids, and we can help you learn all that. Like so, there's like these there's like multiple hurdles to get through and the it's but it is changing the overton window is changing so if you haven't heard of it already the the tuttle twins are, are huge in the homeschooling space and they've been getting more and more vocal about helping explain what bitcoin is to to young so when we the first time we set up a booth we had the bitcoin up and this was before tuttle twins was doing that and the people just looked at us like you're crazy like what who are you what the hell is that thing? That's a scam. They, they didn't, it, we didn't get this warm welcome that we were bringing them something to help them. Um, my prediction is it'll take another few years. Things like things from the Tuttle twins and others are going to help move that needle. The, the fact that Bitcoin is in, in the news, the, the regular news cycle. Now that's going to shift their, their opinions over time. But so far people don't know what to do with us. When we go, they're looking at us like we're, like, huh, okay. And then they, <laughs> they just keep on going. Um, it, it's just so different from anything else that they've had. And so the same thing with the gamers. You, if you're comparing to games, the if they're true hardcore gamers, they just they may want something with really great game mechanics on it. And they might want world-renowned world, uh, artists and, and, and other things. So our games don't compete on that. Our, our games are built on, like, they're fun but they're not meant to be played for five hours straight or something like that. You're meant to play it in 45 minutes. It's meant to have good strategy elements to it, chance elements to it, but it, it's all based on some, some first principle. So the one that we were known for most is huddle up. It's all based on how Bitcoin mining works, right? So then we, 
our, our long-term goal is that every year we're going to put out a new first principle game on some other area. So maybe it's whatever it is, low time preference. It could be energy. It could be whatever it is. So we have lightning game now, a seed phrase game. We're going to make fun of the, the fed um, soon with a, a fed up game. Um, so it's it, the games, the, the gamers, it's a, there's tens of thousands of new games out all the time. There's that it doesn't matter to them. It just, it's not that, okay, whatever you put a B on your game. Yeah. I guess it's just not, it's hard to reach a gamer. Now I did the way that I try to get the gamers. Um, we have a, every year we're going to put out a high end version of the game. So I have a, I have a load time preference version of huddle up, especially for the having edition. So that the box itself opens up in half and has metal pieces I might be able to get the gamers that way because when you walk by that game, it just you with metal coins and things like that. I can the quality of the game will get their attention. But in terms of the things that you and I are talking about from a Bitcoin standpoint, it doesn't it doesn't matter to them. In fact, it actually works against you if you say this game is educational. It's going to be labeled as boring. Like if you're just out of the gate, it doesn't matter if it actually is fun or not. If you label it as educational, you're done <laughs> to the gamers. That's not what they want. That's not what they want. So very different audience. I, I guess they are there for, for playing games, but you can, you can also learn something uh, while having fun and playing a game. <laughs> yeah. I just don't, just don't tell them, just don't tell them that part. Don't tell them they're learning anything. Otherwise, if you tell them that you're going to learn something, you, you just, no, your you're, you're label <laughs> is boring and you're done. Yeah. We'll we'll keep trying. That that one's gonna that one's gonna take a while. How are you doing that with 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 the games and going there to the conferences? So I I just always liked games, and that was one of the reasons that I wanted to put games into the our homeschooling kind of mix because I just like games. So I've been going probably to the one the big one in the U.S. is Gen Con. I've been going to that probably a decade. Um, my brother and I go every year. It's just we go there, and it's only more recently as we got, as we started to actually build a business around how we're going to use games as part of a bridge to pre-corners that I did was more business-like as opposed to hobby-like. But I'd, I'd say it's been over a decade that we've been going to them. And, and that's, that's what my, my question is leading up to is like, how, how different do you see that they are perceiving Bitcoin now over the years? Do you see a difference between like a few years ago, uh, or are we, <laughs> are we all in a bubble? It's <laughs> like, uh, how, how, how do you see the absolute no coiner crowd seeing the game, uh, and perceiving Bitcoin itself? They don't see it at all. It's near zero. I, I tried to, not this past year, the year before, I volunteered to do a, uh, a breakout session. So when you go to these conferences, you can sign up to give a, you can give a little talk on something basically, or play a game with people and you can tell them whatever it is. I had one person show up. I mean, this is, this is a, it's a crowd of 50,000 people or whatever. And <laughs> I was just thinking nobody, they just, it's just not on the radar, just not on the radar at all. Um, And that's, and that's okay. I mean, we're, I mean, I, I don't, we didn't go into this to become a game company. We don't think of ourselves as a game company We're we're, we have that label because that's, that's, that we, that's the way that we kind of broke onto the scene in the Bitcoin space. And, and that's okay because I like games. I'm going to keep making games. They're good for interacting. You and I can talk to each other without a, without watching a screen. You know, we get it, you know, if we're in person at a meetup or whatever it is, we're, we're going to hang out. You get your favorite beverage and we'll, we're going to hang out. And if the kids are there, maybe they learn about cold storage or something else. That's, that's, that, that's good for them. Um, so for, from my perspective, the games will, they're, they're, they differentiate us because it, it does help. Um, the one thing I will say on the games is I think a lot of, a lot of people who become passionate about Bitcoin, if they're, they're very technical, if they're an engineer, maybe they're in finance if they're already into some type of coding, then going to a bit devs or listening to hours of videos and things like they're, they can get excited about it. We need to be able to reach people who don't fit that. And my wife, Tolly fits in that category. So she wouldn't even 
I was trying to get her to listen to books on, on, on Audible. I was trying to get her to listen to podcasts and watch videos. And this is back when the kids were still going through school. And she just didn't have time. She's looking at me like I'm crazy. But once she started to physically move things around that represented what was going on, that tactile feel, she opened up to it. And we've seen it with a number of, we've, we've seen it over and over at, at different in-person events, um, especially with the women. I mean, you, you, and I don't want to be sexist about it, but the, the number of women that have said, this really helped because you go into these usually male dominated meetups or whatever they are and conferences. And it just, they're, we're not, we're not talking to them the way that they want to communicate. And for Tali, she said, this, this was very helpful because now I can kind of see it. I can take those concepts. I have an idea of what they're talking about and that's all I need. And then that, that was kind of her feedback. That's all she needed to get started. So I'm looking at the games as they're just a different way of trying to reach people as well. I happen to like games, so I also want to make sure they're fun. That's it. <laughs> like, I don't want to make a boring game. Uh, that, that just, that would suck. But, um, but that's, where, that's where I see games fitting in. I don't see it being, oh, yeah, they're a game company, and they go to all the game, all the game shows and, and things like that. That's not the most exciting thing to me. Going back to the earlier part of our conversation is when you see somebody when the light bulb goes on and they start to understand what this this strange Bitcoin thing is, and they become interested in it, like that, that that moves you. Like when you see somebody who 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 has has made that step, and you know that once they start learning, they'll go down their own rabbit holes. But you've helped them along. That is that's fulfilling. Right. And that's that's where I just see the roles of games that are are in there. It's just one of multiple things in a toolbox that we're going to use to reach people. Absolutely. And uh, because she, she came up uh, already a lot, uh, uh, we made a podcast together, Tali. Uh, and I think, I don't know, it's probably 100 episodes ago, something like that. Uh, I think when you type in Tali in my, my podcast uh, search, you, you probably will show up uh, for those people who want to hear the, the other side to that and it's fascinating uh, because i still remember a little bit of that and yeah it was exactly like that but it's uh, it's really cool uh to to, to see b both sides uh, of this bitcoin family <laughs> talking about that <laughs> yeah oh, i appreciate that i intentionally have not watched it uh until after we do ours then i'll go back and i'll yeah really cool yeah we, we, we talked a lot about uh yeah homeschooling and, and, and stuff like that also yeah and and her way into into Bitcoin, but yeah, it's uh, for for people that, that want to check it out. That uh, that's I think that's really cool. Uh, after that podcast, and then 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 hers, if you haven't done so. Yeah. Well, then we'll interview we'll our kids, and you can just interview interview the whole family, and uh, you know. <laughs> uh, let, let's get the whole family on. <laughs> how how old are your your kids right now? Uh, so let's so see, seventeen. I gotta be careful what when the birthday season starts. I think we're. Uh, 17 19 21 22 oh yeah that's yeah. that's that's good i i had um the the youngest kid was 13 but then like 15 the next one and 19 so i had like some young kids on but it's, it's always great to hear like really from uh because i think like the, the bitcoin community in general like is 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 pretty old actually like i was fascinated by by how mature the 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 bitcoin community already is like my audience it's not old but it's like uh for for, for someone who has a youtube channel that is themse himself 26 it's uncommon to have an audience that is on average almost 50 uh oh. i have i have three times as many listeners above 65 than under 25 so uh oh. it's it's uncommon i think for a young youtuber to, to have that audience but it's because yeah. the, the bitcoin audience is like that yeah i meant to say i i had it written down so i wouldn't forget congratulations on you had ten thousand subscribers i think was that your thank you so much yeah yeah that is yeah. fantastic so that's uh yeah, it's admirable. Yeah, yeah. Tell me that. Like, wow, that's just cool. Like, it just it was motivating for us to see what you were able to do in a very short period of time. So obviously, it's resonating. So, uh, so keep it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. It's it's uh, 
because I, I kind of just started that and was like, oh yeah, people just like it. Oh, there's a sponsor coming. Oh, guess I have a business. Then I have to quit my job. Like, but uh, I told that story many times on the podcast uh, that, <laughs> that would bother people that <laughs> listen yeah. more often than. But yeah, it's it's uh, the podcast has been a, a great success till now. It's it's not even a full year. I'm not even doing it a full year now, uh, and uh, it's already at over 11,000 uh, 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 subscribers only on YouTube. It has been really good. Well, I also am excited because today is the, the 31st, right? And so depending on so – I want to actually get your opinion because there's, there's kind of that internal to Bitcoin. What is the real birth date of Bitcoin? Is it, is it the white paper, which is anniversary today, right? Is it the first, is it the Genesis block on January 3rd or is it pizza day when you had the first transaction in, in May? So I, my, my opinion is it's the first block, Genesis block. But some people think today they'll say, you know, today is the day the white paper was published. Therefore, today is the birthday of Bitcoin. So I don't know what your opinion is, but I feel honored that if you're doing this daily, that I got to be on, on the, on the white paper day. <laughs> <laughs> really cool yeah that, that that that's true um that's an interesting question um i don't think the first transaction is is the is the birth date of of, of bitcoin i think uh, first transaction is a major milestone uh but the first transaction i don't i don't think that classifies for the the birth day like if we think about a human being maybe i don't know if it's weird to <laughs> compare oh, a human being to bitcoin but if we talk about birth things um like th the uh. first step is kind of the first transaction uh then like uh the genesis blog would be like the the baby actually being born and the birth date for me yeah. and then the white paper is kind of like you get to know that you're pregnant like <laughs> that's how i see it okay all right well, that's actually, I, that actually, that analogy makes a lot of sense. So, you know, depending on, I think in some cultures, they, they go by, you know, you back it up a year to the like inception kind of thing. And on the U.S., it's your actual day that you were born. So uh, it's a cultural thing, maybe. I don't know. But it's anyway, also, it, it's I really think cool it, yeah. I also think with uh, companies, it's also like that because uh, you, you have an official start date of the company, but usually the company starts inofficially or in the head or with an idea or with research or whatever, like three months, six months, or maybe even like a year before that. Uh, so like, that's kind of the white paper where it first got shared because if, if it, if it's not even started yet, if it's not running anywhere, yeah. then it's just an idea at this point. Uh, it's it's already there. Like it, you, someone could have already uh, started it like uh, earlier, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but you just said, I mean, I asked you, like, you said it's been, do you've been doing it less than a year, but that's, that's going from your first show, right? You probably had the idea long before that. Right? Yeah, I made, uh, I mean, uh, the idea of the podcast I had, I think a week before I started. So actually like not that long before, but I made videos, uh, before that. And I was already on social media with Twitter a lot and I made some short videos. Uh, but yeah. the podcast actually, that was like uh, an idea. And like, then I invited a bunch of people and yeah, then, <laughs> then I had the first it's podcast. Nice. So that was really quick. Oh, okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are you, I, I got you really off track. Whatever you're, whatever. Oh, no, sorry. whatever yeah, sorry, sorry. You had to talk about. Uh, uh, one question that, uh, that was in my mind because I'm, um, it has nothing to do with Bitcoin, uh, but I'm a really big, uh, um, board game um uh not not nerd but uh, I, I really like board games and i almost play every day with my girlfriend uh when we have the chance to and i love like i play everyday chess on on, on my phone uh, it's kind of an addiction for me but i also really like uh rummy cup uh playing with her it's 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 a massively nice game i don't know if you know it uh this, this rummy cup if you can, yeah, tell me about it, because uh, and I'm gonna look it up afterwards too. Uh, Rummy Cup is uh, 
Oh, basically, you you have to come uh, to get like two players. You have uh, stones, and you have to p uh, put like uh, um, a sequence of of numbers or colors together. It's really a very chilled game. I will I will uh, uh, um, uh, give it to you afterwards. Okay. But my question was like, what's your favorite game of of all the uh, all the all the games out there that are? Oh wow. Uh, popular so that people actually know it also <laughs> not like my rummy cup um okay so i i again the, for me the context always matters so the the game that i've probably played the most of i wouldn't say is the most fun uh necessarily but it's most traditional so in my family cribbage has been played by many many generations so my i played with my grandfather who had played with generations before him and now Our kids have played with, with my dad. So like when we get together, we always play um, we always play cribbage uh, there. I, I think um, some games that I like for the family. Um, we, we've, we, we've played um, what do you call that game? Uh, there's code names, there's um, oh I just remember I just we just played a different game, I just can't escape it. Um, I've liked Catan. I just I like some of the more popular ones that have been out there, um, out there like that. The ones that, as a game designer, that that I really like are ones that have really complex strategies but really simple rules. So that would be Go, or something like Mancala, something like that, where you can I can teach you the rules in I don't know a couple seconds, and then trying to figure out the strategies of that. People will go to college, try to figure out. To, they'll go to a college just to learn how to play Go, Go strategies. There. So, from a game design standpoint, I anything that that to me is just elegant. If you can come up with something that is really, really s simple with the rules, but has all these variations, I just, I just, there's something in the elegance of that. The fellowship thing is what I like to do with the family, though. Splendor. That was one we played recently. Um, If it's something where people of different generations can play together and you can finish it in about an hour, you have a little bit of luck in there. Because if it's a pure strategy game, like if I get too technical, like again, just stop me. But if you're in a pure strategy game like chess and there's zero luck and you're a better player than me, it's not fun to play anymore because I know you're going to just kick, you're going to, you're going to kick my butt every time. You go and play Catan and now you've got some entropy in there. And now even new players have a chance of winning, right? And so the games I like for families and for friends are the games where we can just be together. And if you have some entropy in it, so think of, again, like a Catan, if you have some of that in there, if you look at Hoddle Up, you can have a strategy in Hoddle Up. You can, you can say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a hash strategy. I'm going to buy extra mining rigs or I have a cold a cold storage strategy, or I have, a, you can have whatever strategy you want, but at the end of the day, there are cards in there and there's a die in there. So there's entropy. So I, I can get beat at my own game. <laughs> and especially with the younger generation, like it just seems to happen that way. Um, I, I just want the fellowship and I want it to be fun. And so the elegance of the game and stuff doesn't really matter as much as, is it something that, that you can play and it's, it's not, not overly complex, but, Yet you do have some strategy. Um, Skull King is another one. It's, it's a card game that we've we've played a lot because you don't need a lot of skill. People laugh a, a lot, and you just you're just hanging out. So I'm I'm going for the fellowship side on on the on the games, and then the, the same thing. That's kind of the reason for cribbage, right? It doesn't. It's it's less important that we're playing the game of cribbage as it is. It's just a tradition that all these different generations have played with each other. And they get to spend time with each other, even though they may not have a lot in common with whatever's going on in their, in their, in their lives. If you want the geeky side of me, I'm going to go one way. The, the personal side of what I personally enjoy, I, I just want to, I want to spend time with family and friends. I want to, I want to spend time with other Bitcoiners, right? And that it has to be playable in less than an hour. Otherwise, people are going to be like, this is too long. and I don't want to do it, right? Uh, but people love to sit down and have a drink and play a game. Okay, like that's just awesome. Like it's just you just get to know people. Quiet people get to open up a little bit. Um, and then on the education side, of course, that's a different discussion. That's <laughs> that's that was our prior discussion. Um, 
So yeah, so it's it's it depends on uh, on the on the audience. But um, if we were going to get together, you know, I would love to play. I would love to play Huddle Up with you, like because you're a Bitcoiner, right? I would like to play Channel Up with you because that's our lightning game. You know, I think that would be we could have fun because as we're playing, we're probably going to talk about some other subjects that we both enjoy. Uh, but it would also be kind of cool to just hang out and just get to know somebody. So. Absolutely. I, I think that that would be great. Are you at any conferences or something like that? The next one, I'm going to be in adopting Bitcoin in El Salvador. We'll be there also. Really cool. Are you? Are you there? Oh, that's fantastic. Are you going to adopting Bitcoin? Yeah, I will be at adopting Bitcoin uh, in 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 uh, November. So like, I'm, I leave actually also in like 10, 11 days, something like that. Uh, and uh, we'll be there for like a week, something like that. Okay, that's awesome. So um, how, I meant to ask though, the unconference, Meet Premier Bitcoin is putting on an unconference the day prior to adopting Bitcoin. If, if you can get to that, that we went last year, that is probably one of the best Bitcoin events I've ever been to. You're looking at 100 to 150 people, amazing venue. And it's, it's so, it, the, the signal is so high, you're just actually engaging with each other like, literally like we're doing now as opposed to some of the bigger conferences i they, they serve a different purpose but they're very focused on who's the next speaker who has a who has a display of something that you want to go check out whereas the unconference is literally you may not know what you're going to talk about so if you go to the unconference and just to give you a flavor you, you come to the unconference there's nothing on the schedule that you have no idea you haven't even looked at it um, they'll kick it off and they'll say, does anybody have anything they want to talk about? And then people will line up and, and you say, okay, you, you grab the microphone and they say, okay, Robin, you get one minute and you say, Hey, I'm Robin. And I want to talk about X, Y, and Z subject, whatever it is. And here's why. And then they pass it to the next person. And then they just figure who, everybody who wants to go talk with Robin about that subject, X, Y, and Z, you guys are going to go in that tent and someone's going to, it's, it's very, it's very free. Which, as opposed to very structured, and, and that's the unconference aspect of it. Uh, that's the day before adopting Bitcoin. If you can get there, I promise you, you you're going to have an amazing, wonderful time. Uh, it's so that whatever that day is, I think that's the 14th. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin only. And Coin Vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing Genesis edition of their watch collections. You have the date of the first ever mined Bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in. I love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing Coin Vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions. I love those watches so so much. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis I guess you already bought some Bitcoin and now the most important step is Is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss Robin to get your Bitbox. And the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual. You have to have the most secure self-custody setup. You have to secure your own devices. You have to protect your privacy. You have to set up an inheritance plan. And depending on where you live, you even want to have a plan B, a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really, really wrong. And through all those steps, the Bitcoin way is guiding you through step By step. And if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty. Yeah, 14. I just uh, looked it up. The, the unconference, uh, really, really cool. I will also wait, wait, I will quickly put it up there so people can, can, can see it actually. Uh, here, 
Perfekt. So yeah, there's the November 14th, uh, hosted in San Salvador. Nice. Yeah, we'll be there. Like, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see afterwards if, if tickets are left, but probably there are the tickets left. Yeah. Sure. yeah. There's tickets cool. left. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, I will, will, uh, will be there. Oh, oh, that's cool. cool. Really cool. Thank you so much for the tip. I never heard about that. I, I did an interview with me, Romero Bitcoin, but, uh, <laughs> you talk to John or Jamie. Ah, uh, wait, 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 wait. How was he called? Well, I guess it's John Dunahy. It could have been Jamie. I forgot. It, it's it's in the, maybe I get I get it later in the podcast. Yeah. Uh, but I, I will I will I will link. The, the thing that I wanted to show you uh, earlier, I wanted to show you Rummy Cup. That's okay. the game. Do you know it? Oh yeah, we used to call it Rummy. Uh, I have I have that from. Uh, we used, I pronounced it differently. That was the problem. I used to, we used to call um, it when I was, in, uh, when I was growing up. We maybe, got, it's, it, maybe it's pronounced like that. I don't know. If not. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you on the pronunciation rather than me, but, um, <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm usually, I'm usually wrong with pronunciation. P people, uh, get mad at me because in my ad spot, I said elegant and I, I cannot pronounce it nicely. <laughs> oh, no, that makes it more authentic. I think that's good. Yes. I have played this before. We, um, we'll play, um, We'll play rummy, but with cards, like the the traditional rummy game. Oh, uh, you you it, you played with cards? Interesting. Yeah, it's just it's a traditional card game. If you just look up rummy, um, just rummy like that. Uh, I think it's a Y. I'm trying to. I'm trying oh, to rummy, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Rummy card game, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you it's, can play it with the normal cards. Nice. The principles are the same. You just play, and you can play with the regular. So, if you're traveling, for example, it's a lot easier to carry a deck of cards with you than uh, a bunch of tiles. So, uh, you can just learn. I mean, for you, you would just stick a pack of cards in your in your whatever backpack or where you're traveling with, and then just learn the rules on that. And you're basically playing. It's a, it's not exactly the same, but it's very very similar. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I love that game. And uh, it's, it's a game that's a little bit harder to take with you in, in holidays, even though it's quite like, it's not that hard because you just have like the stones and, and somewhere to put it. Uh, mm. So you can easily put it somewhere, but uh, a card game is even better because you can take it even to, to the restaurants like that and stuff like that. Yeah. You ever play Mahjong? The Ma no, Mahjong? I don't know about Mahjong. Tali's, uh, well, my family for whatever reason played even no, they're not Chinese, but it's a Chinese game. M A H J O N. -G. I forget the spelling now. It's a... like that, right? Yep. There you go. M A H J O N G. Yeah, I got it close. Okay. Yeah, it's but you you certainly can't carry it around with you. But um, the tiles have. If you get a good quality game, the tiles just feel great and they make a lot of very cool noises uh, to, to, to play. But that one, um, you probably want to find some other people who like games because it's not going to be as easy to learn. Um, it's not going to be easy like Rummy. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, let's. <laughs> I, so, sorry for the, the short uh, game trip here because oh, I, 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 like, I like games a lot. And uh, maybe people are like, wait, I, I was here for a Bitcoin podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love the game thing. I, that's why I sent you that other presentation ahead of time because I, I, Tali, the one thing she did tell me was that you guys did not go deep on the games. And so I said, okay, well, maybe this will, this will help. And that's why I sent you the other, other presentation shortly before we started. Absolutely, yeah. And the, the other thing, the, I think that's probably the most feared game, uh, but it's very popular, as you know, Monopoly. Uh, yes. that, 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 that's probably, maybe <laughs> that's, that's the opposite of what you're doing. <laughs> if, you pull up the, um, if you pull up the deck that I sent you, I actually, I got tired of people saying, because yeah, I'd, have, I'd have Huddle Up out, and they say, okay, this is a Bitcoin game. And... And then they say, "You should, what about, what about, where's Bitcoin Monopoly? Uh, and I kept trying to think, I just like, Monopoly is a fiat game. Like Bitcoin is not fiat. And so finally, I just got frustrated enough that I just took the same. So in the game of Huddle Up, you have this, the, the time chain, the issuance schedule, because it's actually 21 million that's represented by the, the tokens and they have halvings. So it's the, 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 um, yeah. What this, page is it? Oh, uh, that's a good question. It's towards the, it's towards the, the end. If you go towards the, it's right there, that one. Okay. This is hard to see where it says traditional there. It's meant to look like a monopoly board. Do you see that? And so, so what happened is 
those these are all different versions of Huddle Up. It's the same game. The one on the far left is what it looks like, the cardboard version. So the 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 size of the hexes there are the same size as a um, Catan game. And in fact, some people will say, hey, that looks like Catan. Then I get this Bitcoin question, or I'm sorry, the Monopoly question, and I just got tired of it. So I took it, the exact same issue in schedule. So here's in the game, you start with this, and then you go here, and you have a having, and then you go to this, and you have a having, and then at the end of the game, whoever's huddled up the most wins. And all I did is I made them squares instead of hexagons and changed the color. So, so it's the same game, right? Nothing has changed. But I said, I'm, if you want it to look like Monopoly, fine. I'll make it look like Monopoly. And so I had this add-on board, and it was it was partly for fun and partly, um, you know, it was it was partly just to to make it look different. If if that helps somebody play because it looks more familiar to them then i'm okay with that i mean if there's someone who's who's my age who's more familiar with monopoly and they they and that helps them start then and that's okay you know but what but i learned in that process too though is i can make this game look like anything i can the the high-end game looks kind of like casino i can make it look like a certain culture uh there's a lot of future opportunity to adapt this even though the mechanics they're all based on they're all based on bitcoin like they don't change but from a a game standpoint i can change the look and feel of it to make it look like pretty much anything you want you know so i don't know what a i don't know like what a good austria game is but you know we could you and i could probably work together and say here are the things that are very unique to our culture and and this is a game that you know and if we can make it look like this then we could probably make a huddle up version that would appeal to people in Austria. And that, we can do that anywhere. So it's like, it, it's just, it's a lot, I, it doesn't, it's not gonna generate a lot of revenue, but it's, from an art standpoint, it's, it could be a lot of fun because you, you know, you get to, you get to just get creative with it. So um, I, have, it, I, I, like it, I like it. So I, I want to share one more game uh, with, with you. Uh, it's a, it's a party game. Uh, and it's it's super fun, especially if if you have like a a late night house party where like I don't know eight friends are here or something like that. So like you you need a little bit more people for that, and you don't need anything for that. You just need like pen and paper for that, pen and paper and a bowl basically. And what you do is like everyone, uh, let's say there are ten people, everyone writes uh, three uh, words on a piece of paper, whatever the word is, uh, and they, they are put in a bowl. And then uh, there are two teams, and you have to guess. I guess the words. The first round is with just um, speaking about it. The second round is with like making uh, signs. Mm. Uh, and the third round, and the third round is the best. Like it's always in every round, it's the same words. So you know, with the first round, you know all the words, the, all the words are played, and then you start over. Uh, the whole new words are like this, the same words, but uh, in, in the, the whole uh, words again in the second round with like signs. And then in the third round, you only make noises. <laughs> and that's so really? fun uh, because you can only make noises. And then you're like, oh, what, what is that noise? Like, how, how do you make a noise of like, uh, I don't know, uh, anything that, that you read on a, a piece of paper? But it's, it's a seriously fun uh, okay. party game. Okay, What's, uh, that that sounds awesome. But the way you first described it also reminded me of this game. I don't know if it's the, the glare there or not. <clears throat> oh yeah, Pip uh, not, uh, for yeah, yeah. It's on the list that, that I share with you. So this game is based on on BIP, the actual BIP thirty nine list of words, and uh, it's meant to be a party game. So you can do a collaborative, boys against girls, or individuals, however you want to do it. But you there are going to be three words. So that's why it reminds me of what you just said. So the, the, everybody gets the same deck of cards. And what I did is I took the, the BIP39 list and I put them into categories. And I, and I was trying to make a game out of it. I'm like, how do I make a game out of these seed phrases, out of uh, uh, these, these words on the BIP list, the BIP39 list? And, and it, the animals came out to be just a little bit more than a, a deck, than a standard deck. It was 74. So anything that was li- related to a living creature at some point, I, I put it into there. So you and me and, and, and four of the people, we all get, it's a different colored deck, but it's the same list of words. And then we pick an oracle and we say, okay, Robin, you're going to be the oracle. You pick three words and you put them in order, right? Everybody takes turns asking the oracle questions. So I can ask you yes or no questions or how many questions. So how many are mammals? 
That's an okay question. If I ask you, what's the second, what is the, what is the second animal? You, that's not okay. You can't, you can't ask the Oracle for the answer, but the Oracle always has to answer the same way. So you say, okay, two of them are mammals. And then somebody else asks, how many live in the water? And somebody else says, you know, whatever. And the first person who can guess the three words, but the, but just like a real seed phrase, you have to have them in the correct order, right? So it's not just guessing what they are. And if you take, and so the, in every one of my games, I always put like a little symbol of something down the corner to represent whatever the game is. And so this one is the formula for the number of, uh, number of options that represents. So it turns out that with, <clears throat> with three different cards out of 74, it was something like 388,000 like ways to, to organize it. So it's, you're not just going to guess it. <laughs> like, um, and uh, you have to guess a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's, but it reminded me of what the way you started that out with you, you have to guess the words. And what's funny about it is the reason it's a fun game is it's not technical and it reveals that we, we don't know a lot about animals. At least most people don't. Right. They, they like, what is a mammal? Not a mammal. You think these are very basic things, but as, Someone will ask a question like one time it was uh, uh, like a bug, you know, the bug versus an insect kind of thing. Somebody who's very technical knows that other people like they're all the same, like whatever. And this is so people that you just laugh a lot at each other because you're like, wait a minute. You, you told me that this one was this. And they're like, yeah. And they're like, no, it isn't. And they get into this argument about, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. So like one time, um, I don't remember if it was what it was. Someone asked how many have teeth? And I think our, our daughter was the Oracle at the time. And she's like, she had to go look it up on Google and everybody's looking at her going, how do you know? How do you not know? That? Well, one of the, one of the, it turns out one of the things was like, it was some sea creature, like a lobster or something. And she had to look it up and, or, and then she's like, yeah, here it is. And I a picture of it was like this inside their stomach and gross. It was, and so it was just completely nonsensical, fun game. Um, but then of course the educator in you comes out, if you want to teach somebody about seed phrases you can tell them about what the list is what you know how you can get into all that the, the technical stuff uh, but when you describe putting three words into a bowl like that's this, this game is you pick three words you put them in order and everybody else has to guess it and that's it like that's the that's the only rules <laughs> and it's uh it's it's much whereas like channel up is based on lightning and that thing is it's not for the faint of heart that's that's more like spock 3d chess kind of you know thing bit 39 is more like pictionary right and you, you just you know it's new year's and you get a party of people together and you play charades or pictionary or something that's uh, that's the level of difficulty for bip so is uh, the oracle inspired by by matrix no it's uh it the inspiration for that came from i was when i was studying so when i I put all the my notes for that first game into the to a book because I had like more ideas than I could put into the game. I and I so I just put all my notes together and I put them in the book. And it had to do with um, it had to do something with um, in the cipher world, you know, encoding. Uh, it talked about um, this idea of an oracle, and it was so hard for me. To, I just couldn't get my head wrapped around it. The the, the concept that I remember was no matter who asks the question, they always will answer that same question in the same way. Right. So it's, it's, you know, if you're arbitrating between two things, if you and I were going to do a smart contract of some kind of, maybe there's an Oracle that says, yeah, the winner of the game is X. And we agree that that is the decision point, or that's the thing that gets to decide what the answer is. Um, I'm doing a poor job of des uh, deciding it, but to me, it was, it was something related to coding and, and um, it was, it was sort of cipher related and I don't, I don't know the exact concept now. Uh, I just stuck in the back of my head. I'm like, okay, that's something that we should be kind of cool to teach. And, and I couldn't even grok the whole concept. And I was like, but it, it just sounded cool. <laughs> like, Oh, that sounded cool. Um, I'll just put it in there, you know, just because if you're going to play a game, like in channel up, the object of the game is to be the first person to buy two pizzas with Bitcoin. Right. There's when you when I'm looking at it, when I'm thinking about what whatever concept it is that I want to teach in a game, I'm trying to figure out something that just is not just who has the most points or who gets done first, which is most games. Right. 
whoever gets to X first or whoever gets the first amount of money or the most money at the end of the game, they're all very similar. And so whenever I can find something to mix it up a little bit with different words that might have different meanings or, you know, something else, I try to, I try to work that in there. And that's what I did with the Oracle. I don't fully understand the concept. I just heard it come up multiple times in, in discussions uh, like at BitDevs. And then I would say, okay, where, where can I put that in a game? I said, okay, I'm going to put it in this game here. And I don't know. There's, there's not a lot to it. I, I wish I'd, you know, now that, now that we're talking about it, I wish I would actually studied that because now I, I don't sound so smart about what an Oracle is, but um, I, that's all. It was just, I heard it come up in Bitcoin discussions and I thought it'd be cool in a game. <laughs> hey, it, it, it reminded me instantly of the Oracle of the Matrix because uh, she also like uh, gives some answers, but not complete answers. <laughs> like you, you ask her and you ask her and it's like, yeah, this and that, but she never really like, oh yeah, that's how it is. And she kind of like just puts you in the right direction. Okay, I need to go back and rewatch that. I rewatched it recently because um, it, today actually is the last day Matrix uh, is featured uh, on Netflix. So the trilogy, the originally first three three uh, parts of Matrix uh, will be this. Um, how do, do you say this? continued uh with tomorrow like the, the day on the bitcoin white paper day is the last day uh, the matrix uh first three movies are on netflix the the new one that i did not even see the that, that was coming out 2021 there's some some kind of new one never watched it uh, that is still on there but it's 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 funny that it's exactly today <laughs> why would they do that they, they must be available somewhere else i mean they're not gonna so you, to, you, you can you can watch it anywhere on the internet just like put in uh, a matrix watch free online you, you will find it it's it's yeah. probably illegal but <laughs> but you can find it uh it's it's probably also somewhere on an and a legal platform you can definitely buy it on amazon and stuff like that on, on apple uh yeah. maybe even on youtube you can buy it but yeah netflix uh doesn't has it anymore i need to i need to i, I it all the, for all the talk of the matrix in the bitcoin community i am not <clears throat> i have not watched that for years many years so let me uh i mean i just need to go back sometime and <laughs> rewatch that i have a but weird problem about, about the oracle thing that you're talking about until this discussion so <clears throat> i have a weird problem with matrix watching because i always get motivated like i, I don't i don't know about you but when i watch matrix um, I watch it for like 15 minutes and I get crazy motivated and then I stop the movie and go work something. It's like this, this what? breaking out of the matrix is such a big motivation for me in my head somehow, uh, that, that it's, it's crazy motivating for me. I, I had to watch the movie, uh, like one movie I have to watch like in three, four times. Wow. Well, that's pretty cool though. If you have something that you can trigger motivation like that. I, I, but, but sometimes I just want to watch a movie also. <laughs> did, you see, um, did you see Guy Swan's meme that he made out of the Matrix? What, what uh, like it's a picture or like uh, he made he, a video? He made it into, he was using, so Guy Swan loves AI and he was using AI and he basically made this, it's probably three to five minutes long thing about the Matrix, but it, but it had to do with Bitcoin. Like he switched the words around and stuff, but still, but he used AI to match the, the, the player or the um oh man if i try to find it now let's see if i can go to his i, I think i found it wait uh but if you if you, you like, like matrix, matrix you're gonna, you're gonna love, love his short work he did a really really great job yeah. that. let me i'm trying is, to convince him to come out to the adopting or to is, the is, is that that one from yeah. guy swan exit fiat and the bitcoin a matrix meme go ahead and hit, hit play if you could let me see if it's the one i'm thinking of because I want to, I, I don't know if there was. Fiat is a system, yo. Yeah, that is it. Yeah. That, that's it? Yeah, I think that's the right one. Oh, man. He, I have to watch it. Uh, he, I, like the, he, he did such a great job with that. I was I was like, wow. A, AI is amazing what you can do. But um, obviously, he's he's a, he loves story and he loves the Matrix. And uh, I think that is just... Uh, I just thought that was a great, it was just great. So when you, if you're already a Matrix fan and you're a Bitcoin fan, I think you're going to, I think you're going to like that short. I will watch it later. Really cool. <laughs> I love it. Really cool. Well, I have to admit, 
I, we're covering things I never expected to cover on a, in a, <laughs> a podcast. So, uh, that's fine. Yeah. There's, there's no way to, I was asking Tali, can I prepare? And she's like, no, you can't prepare. He's going to ask you questions and you're going <laughs> to. Yes. I, I, there are some, uh, some guests that want me to uh, tell them the questions beforehand. And I always say to them, um, tell me what you want to rant about and i will make sure it's in the podcast but i never give any questions beforehand i don't even give any structures beforehand uh and uh i i, I like it that way I, I like having a conversation and and having something there was like i think one two episodes where uh um where someone came in with a presentation and i looked for the presentation and i was like oh that's seriously interesting like that's like uh he really thought about something here uh and it, it's funny enough that one guy with the presentation is actually my second uh uh or third uh best performing uh podcast ever uh so that was really good but usually it's just like i have a bunch of notes that i made usually i don't ask the notes <laughs> but it's just like if there's a point where I don't know where to go, then, then I have that. Uh, but usually like I have like 10 topics prepared or like maybe 11, uh, mm -hmm. that I could, uh, talk with that guest. And after the second or third, it's just a conversation then like, it, it's usually like the first five to 10 minutes, which is like, okay, let's warm up. And then it's just a conversation. The same Joe Rogan says that all the time. He's like, he needs like the first 30, 40 minutes to warm up. And then it's just a conversation. Uh, I, I don't want to do four hours, to, <laughs> but, 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 uh, I, I like the one hour mark and we are yeah already over the one hour mark. I just saw, uh, and it flew by and I, I like that kind of a style. And, uh, I also like, because like people on, on social media, are like, oh, you have to niche down. You have to like really be in Bitcoin. And I'm like, eh, if I have a Bitcoin podcast, first of all, like I, I don't call the podcast Bitcoin podcast. It's just like Robin Sire podcast. Uh, I did that intentionally. So, uh, I don't have to do a rebranding if Bitcoin is so successful, uh, that it's so boring that nobody wants to talk about it, which yeah. I, will happen at some point. Yeah. Uh, and some point, some days I just like, don't talk about Bitcoin, <laughs> but it's rarely, <laughs> you know, that's true. I mean, it's, it's sort of like, you're not going to, someone's not going to hang up a, a sign saying I do internet business. You're like, everybody just uses it. Right. Yes. Right. That's the point. In 93 or something. Then like you would have been, it would have been, uh, it would have been a different, a different thing. I, I think you're smart to, to do that. We did not, we went the other way when we, when we were naming our, our homeschooling podcast, we, there's already a lot of homeschooling podcasts out there and there's already a lot of Bitcoin out there. And I was, and I looked at what the Bitcoin veterans did and they just called it the Bitcoin veterans. And I'm like, well, I know exactly what that show is. Like, I don't have to, I don't have to have a tagline to say the Robin Sayer show is X because the title was Bitcoin homeschoolers. And like, so we went the other way. We just said, let's make the name so specific. Um, but the other hand, I think we're, you know, we're going to look at our, you know, our long-term goal with that is to maybe t take our lessons learned from those uh, interviews and, and I don't know, rants, if you will, and maybe put them into a book or a curriculum or something else. So that's not something that we're going to do forever, right? The idea is let's, 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 let's collect some cool conversations. We'll help people out with that. And um, we'll meet some new people in the process. Uh, but we just, we went the other direction. We said, well, we'll make the name exactly what it is so you don't have to ask what's that bitcoin homeschooling podcast well it's the bitcoin homeschoolers yeah okay but uh but yeah if you're going to do this for a long time i think uh i uh, i think you're you're very forward thinking because i, I at some point we're going to reach that that point i think that's going to happen with conferences too because right now i don't see a lot of advertisements for people to say hey let's go to an internet conference right and you're saying hey there's this great new technology it's going to change everything let's go you know to it so i think in in five or 10 years, we're not, you don't, you don't necessarily need these. You don't need a conference every week for that's labeled Bitcoin. And right now we're still on the increase. Like I, I can't keep up with the, it just feels like every, like we just keep coming up with more and more conferences, um, which is cool. Cause I like, uh, it's very, it makes you bullish that there's so much interest, but in five years and in 10 years, 
Like, I just don't know if, if adoption goes the way we expect it to go, like, do you need a whole conference on it? You're already using it, your business, you're already using it personally. The government will be using it, the company, like everybody will be using it. So you won't need it. You won't need to label everything with it. Um, but, it, it probably will go with like with the internet. There's not an internet conference, but there's like uh, an, an IT security conference and there's like a video games yeah. conference where there's like a niche of that that's actually interesting and developing. And then there's a, a conference around that. Maybe that's how it works out with Bitcoin. Yeah, I think that that's exactly what it'll go. You know, and at that point, then maybe the game conference will have a separate. <laughs> then maybe the game conference will come online. But there won't be a like a a separate Bitcoin homeschooling conference because they already have homeschooling conferences. We'll just be part of that, that system or that society or community, whatever that community, I guess we'll just become one piece of that uh, other thing, as opposed to a separate thing where we're on, on an Island. But again, I don't, I think you're just really forward thinking. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it takes it. I don't know if it takes a decade to get there, how long it takes us to get to that point. Um, but it just makes sense that we'll eventually, with adoption, we'll get there. And if we don't have adoption, then you won't you won't have them either for a different reason, right? <laughs> so it's it, it's uh, it, my photo is really simple uh, because it started out out as the Bitcoin Path podcast. So like it actually started with with the Bitcoin branding, uh, but then uh, I think after like a month or something like that, I was like, yeah, it's. I don't want to do those rebrandings. Like uh, there's so, so many rebrands. I, I want to have one podcast that I do all my life. And I, and I decided to actually do this podcast till I die. Maybe not every day. <laughs> Maybe the, the frequency will, will change uh, along the years. Uh, especially if I'm, I'm, I'm getting like maybe 40 or 30, maybe I get kids or something like that. Then probably, I don't know if it's, if it's possible, but anyways, uh, I decided I want to do this podcast till I die. And, I know for sure Bitcoin will become boring before I die. <laughs> so yeah. At some point I will talk about something else and I will have a different interest. And then I want to talk about the, the interest I have and not about Bitcoin anymore. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Well, I'm really glad you're going to make it to the, um, to the unconference. So if you, if you have whatever, the, if you, if you have an inkling of what that other interest might be, you know, in the post podcast life, it's a great place to just test out ideas. And just talk with people, whatever, you know, whatever's on your mind, you literally can just say, does anybody else want to talk about this? And then I'll, I'll give you an example. So Tali uh, went up and she went with some other ladies and they basically said, we want to talk about women for Bit uh, Bitcoin for women. And we, we don't like the way everybody talks. The same kind of thing we just talked about earlier in the in this in this show. Um, so they they went away and they were underneath like a tent or something. Cause this, the, there's a big lawn area outside. It's like an, it's like a brewery up in the mountains. It's just beautiful. And, and, uh, the women were gone for hours just talking and talking. What came out of that is they decided, Tali decided to do a women's retreat. And so you never know what's going to come out of the discussions that you have there. It's just, it's just a really great environment. I think you're going to really, I'm really glad you're gonna be able to make it. Um, are you, are you, I'm curious. So adopting, are you uh, one of the speakers? Do you, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know yet what <laughs> I'm also not, yeah, on the, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to see if you, I wanted to know what you were going to sp speak on then. So, uh, yeah, I, I was at Bitcoin Amsterdam, uh, actually on the main stage. Uh, that, that was my first ever, um, event where I spoke in front of an, like, uh, in-person audience. I never spoke about anything Bitcoin related in front of more than like 20 people. And there I was on the main stage with like, I don't know. 3000 people or something like that. Uh, and uh, like a lot of people also watching online, that was uh, something completely new. Wow. And I actually moderated a panel. I was not even a speaker. I was like the moderator of, of that panel. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I was with, uh, Chris Penkinson there from coin shares. I was from Bram, with Bram Kunstein from, uh, the, the Bitcoin for millennials podcast. Uh, and with captain Sid, uh, I was on the, uh, on, on the panel and we talked about, uh, the, the vision for Bitcoin in 2050 uh, and, and what we will expect there. So I really interesting topic that I could talk about very long. Yeah. And why 
uh, this topic came up uh, because, as you said, you want to do with the podcast something. It's interesting. I when I get invited to a podcast, which also happened like I don't know 10, 15 times already, uh, I get a lot asked like, "Oh, what did you learn from the podcast? What are like outstanding learnings from that?" Because I do so many podcasts, I'm coming up like three podcasts to go to the three hundred podcasts actually uh, so far. So uh, I my Bitcoin knowledge like really grew massively in the last uh, 11, 12 months. Uh, and people want to know like, oh, what are your learnings? What are your future outlooks from that? Because I have so many uh, Bitcoiners talking to me and I gathered all my thoughts and inspirations that I have from my own podcast, just in like a very long Google Docs document <laughs> that I want to bring in like an article or blog or some, some kind of form that I just can give people as like a free pdf or something like that um if it's if it's really interesting maybe i make a book out of it uh but i even if i make a book out of it i, I just want to give it away for, for free as a pdf or maybe i make a news like i don't know like what i do with it but at some form i want to do something with it and the guys from bitcoin magazine oh ask me oh, what what do you want to talk about and uh, after reading my notes this was kind of the obvious topic out of that because of ask a lot the question of how do you see Bitcoin and how do you uh, see it in the future and what role it will play? Well, I, I mean, I guess, I mean, you could, if you like that subject, maybe that's what you talk about. If you just have a, you know, block of time. Uh, the one Let's that, the, the one that, um, so last year we did a presentation that talked about some of the stuff that was on that deck I shared with you. Um, it was, it was basically how to use game theory or how did I phrase it? I forget the title of our thing last year when we spoke, but it was it was largely saying, here's how we took these game elements and we put them into an actual game for you to play. Uh, this year, I'm going to talk on the, the paradox of free because in the Bitcoin space, we talk about free and open source a lot and the, the benefits of free and open source software. So a couple of places like OpenSats, Block, others, they now have education grants. Right. So the, the unconference I just told you about is all about educators. And the if you want to go and if you if you want to become an educator, I don't know. I, I don't know what an official educator is. I mean, I think a podcaster is an educator. <laughs> I mean, you're people who are watching this are probably getting something out of it. I mean, it's it's probably not just I don't think it's entertainment. Maybe it is for some, but it's more like a learning thing. Yeah. But there's this this idea that. Uh, at least um, maybe I was, maybe it was just me, but there was this idea that you had to, everything has to be free and open source, that that's the only way to do it. And, and, and I'm like, yeah, but I mean, I'm not going to take my game and just give it away. I mean, that's, we're trying to build a business around, around that. And so we, you know, I can't, I mean, I just, I mean, I don't know, I guess if you have a lot of Bitcoin, that's your hobby and you could just give it away. We're trying to make this, this is our living. And so I was like, okay, if I make a digital version of this thing, what if I gave that away for free? So I could keep the physical and then I could separate that. And I went down this completely new rabbit hole for me about what does free and open source really mean? And I don't think everybody has, I don't think you could get two people to agree exactly on what it means. Some people it is, it should be free to other people. Some people should be, um, I can look at anything in the software so it doesn't control me, I control it. Some people could be, it's free to use. It's free to distribute, free to sell, not sell. I mean, there's like, like a, you just, your head starts to spin with all these, these nuances. Um, but the idea is that it, it takes a lot of work to build really good educational content, right? It's, it's, you're going to have to put in the proof of work to, to make something that's worthwhile and it's not free. Your time, if you invest your time to make a book or do whatever with your notes, Man, that could take you years, right? Years of podcasting, years of noting, years of putting that together. And I come along and say, yeah, you should give away that for free. And and some people will say, like you, like, yeah, I'm okay with that. But like when you have a, if you're doing a product or a service or something else, you know, how do you, how do you reconcile? How do you get people to come to a nonprofit and teach if they can't get paid? That teaching isn't free, right? So the Somebody has to make the materials. That takes time. Someone has to teach the materials. That takes time. Someone may have to market it because other people may not even know they need it. So who's going to do the marketing? And so my, my thought is free is not free. 
free like there, you if you're going to create value somebody is investing time and energy and and thought into that and so i'm trying to figure out how to package that all up and talk about it with other people at adopting bitcoin so i'm still trying to figure out that whole <laughs> i'm still trying to figure out that whole thing but it, it's a rabbit hole that i went down this year as i wanted to share it with other people to 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 kind of see if I hit a nerve with anybody, uh, you know, on it. So, um, because I know that there's a lot of people in the Bitcoin space, a lot of entrepreneurs are trying to figure out how to follow their passion with Bitcoin and make a living. You hit your 10,000 subscribers, like good on you, but I don't know. I don't think you're in the majority. I think, I think a, there's a lot, there's a lot more people who are very, very motivated to help other people. In, in Bitcoin and spread the word about Bitcoin that can't make a living off of that, right? It's not free to them. They still have to pay their bills, but they have this, this desire and capabilities that they can help other people. So how do you, how do you bridge that? How do you help the educators, you know, do that depending on your, your role? Are you a nonprofit? Are you a whale? Are you an educator? What are you? And so, to me, there's something there. I haven't I haven't figured out the best framework for it yet, um, but that's what I'm going to talk about at adopting. And um, I'm not sure where it's going to go, uh, <laughs> but that's what's piquing my interest uh, right now. And so I made a proposal to talk about it, and they said okay. And I was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> I got to go now. I got to go build that. <clears throat> so I don't know. What are your thoughts? Do you have any initial thoughts about? I, I love that a lot. Um, and I mean, <laughs> monetizing, uh, you being an educator is really a, a challenge. Uh, I mean, there's like this traditional way of being a teacher, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, I don't like that too much. Uh, but being an educator in online space, because you have to give a lot for free um, before you even have the authority of people trusting you, what you have to say, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like if, if you come out and, and nobody knows you and you're like, Hey, I have this, this great course about Bitcoin. Um, and then they're like, Oh, but, but, but who are you? Uh, so th th that's kind of like, I think the initial problem of, of a lot of people. Um, but I don't know, like I, I, I had the privilege that I started it completely as a passion. And I, even when I started the podcast, I didn't have the um, thought about m making it monetizable. It was only when then uh, 20 more Bitcoin came of, uh, came to me and like, Hey, let's, let's do something together. And then I was like, Oh, there's, there's money in this podcast. <laughs> and it was not a lot, uh, but uh, in, in January I got, the the first 200 euros from twitter uh, and i was like wait i i get paid for 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 putting out uh, my 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 shit posts there uh, so, <laughs> so so that was like oh there's like a business model and then i just like quit my job uh, i didn't have enough uh income to cover all my expenses but i was like i will figure it out uh and yeah now i'm almost uh, at the level that i was with my previous job so now it's really good uh but yeah i i i, I definitely see that yeah. yeah so it's yeah it's 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 good to hear people who have gone that have made it to that it's not a lot like it's 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 really uh because i think a lot of people underestimate the the amount of work that that actually has to go to like i since uh basically like before i started full time i worked full time at another company and like nothing to do with bitcoin with it security and i dedicated still every day at least 2 hours to build my twitter to build an online presence so this was like uh, one whole year of two hours per day, completely unpaid. I did it partially because I wanted to build uh, an audience. I wanted to build uh, an, an, an following and, and wanted to be a bigger part of the Bitcoin community. But I also did it because I really love Bitcoin and love the interaction with it. Like both were melding really nicely together. It didn't felt like 
work and because it was not my income it all there was also no pressure it was really nice uh, and then there was this point where all of a sudden saw like oh there's like actual money in there uh, then i really started to work like 60 70 hours per week uh, on on like oh how do i build a podcast like how do how do i do that like there's so many podcasts out there there's also so many bitcoin podcasts out there it's not that easy to like like ah, i'm here oh all of a sudden you have eleven thousand uh, subscribers so there's a lot of uh, work in there and uh, there's like this statistic of podcasts uh, there's like 97% quit within the first three episodes. Uh, and from the three, three 3% that are still there, uh, uh, only 1% makes it then to the 20th episode. And there are not too many regular podcasts out there that put actually every week uh, or every month. And like me every day, <laughs> there's very, very rarely oh, people out there that do that. That's a beautiful lesson though. I mean, that, that to me, would be something that other people would be inspired to hear, right? Because you said, listen, it wasn't, it wasn't that I was a super genius. It was that I was consistent. And once I committed, I didn't stop. I said, I'm going to keep on doing this. I'm going to do this every day. You said until you rest of your life. Uh, most people won't make that big a commitment. <laughs> but the, I think that's a beautiful thing. And it could actually inspire people who are um, I know Tali and I have, I mean, we, we've, we have that, uh, what they call it, like the, what they call it, the, um, the good idea fairy type of thing. You have so many ideas, like you just, you don't focus on the one thing and, and move it across the finish line. And so we have a ton of ideas that we want in our podcast. And we, we just, we're, we've been balancing our things and we're saying, okay, well, we're going to have to delay this because we have this, whatever it is, like it's things are constantly moving. And what that does is we don't do what you did. We, we've lost some of our, it's sort of like stopping going to the gym for a, a period. If you, if you miss one day, it's, it's not that difficult to get back to the gym in there. If you've missed two days, it's a little bit more hard. If you've missed a full week, you basically have a new habit, right? So if you have a new podcast or a blog or whatever it is that you do, and you start out really, really strong because you're motivated, you have to work past that, that period when the resistance, like when you, you miss a, a day or you miss a, whatever it is that you're producing. And so your story that you work through that and you're now at almost 300, like that's, you, you're basically, you could give someone inspiration. I think you could inspire people sharing that. So maybe you consider, I'm just brainstorming with you, consider sharing your story that maybe, Hey guys, look, here's some things that I learned on my journey. And I, and I hope that these lessons will help you as well, because I, that, that to me is inspirational. When I hear like someone who's done gone through that, it feels like a big deal to me to do that. I don't know. It, maybe I'm making it over it. That's the kind of thing I want to teach my kids. I want to say, Hey guys, look at, look at Robin did. He said, I'm going to do this. And he committed to it and he did it for 300 episodes straight. And saying you guys want to start your own show or your own channel, your own channel, whatever it is, nothing stops you because you can anybody can record with their phone and 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 do whatever you want there. So I that's I'm just brainstorming with you. I don't want to pressure you, but I I think that would be pretty cool. I share with you the link in the chat. The thing that led me when I was going down this rabbit hole to to basically say okay. We're making these physical games, free market kids like channel up and the stuff that we've been talking about. But if I want to, if I want to do the educational impact, I need to remove the supply chain frictions that are there, right? So it costs a lot of money to send a game to Austria and you probably have import duties and it's going to cost you more to get the game than it would, I mean, more in the duties and taxes and shipping than just to the game itself, right? And I said, okay, I want to keep playing. I want to keep playing with the the games because I I think they're they're good. But imagine that um, imagine that we took just a digital version and we made that piece free and open source, right? And we gave that away free. What would that look like? And and so then someone said, well, you can go get grants. I said, I don't I don't know the process to get grants. Well, here's what you, you got to go. And then the the grants would say, well, you're you don't have a project. So then I go and say, okay, I'll start a project. And they say, you need to have a free and open source license. And I'm like, what, what the hell? What, 
a license. What? Like I just, I was like, so this was my journey that this was the, the, and I'm still on it that inspired, can I get somebody else to help me from an event, like a grant standpoint, take, it's just a first project, get huddled up in a digital format. Cause now I can get it to anywhere in the world. We can translate to other languages. We build it on Noster or maybe hole punch or some other freedom type technology. And we can link educational material to it in any language. And now I've introduced, um, I've introduced you to freedom tech. Even if you don't want it, someone could zap you things or you get rewards on the, on lightning. I just, the potential impact for adoption to me is huge. And I, I just wanted to have a separation between that and our, and our other business, but it hasn't been easy trying to figure this out, which is, the, which is what inspired me to, sh to do that topic at adopting. So I'm still on it. I don't have a solution for it, but this is, that's, that's the, one of the next steps in our journey is to try to figure that out. Because I think, I think the impact from an education standpoint, that's why I don't consider it just a gaming company. I think our, our company is more, our mission is, is so much bigger than that. And this would extend our, our impact exponentially, but I'm trying to figure out how to do it. <laughs> You're trying to like, Oh, it's not free, right? It's going to take time. You have development work in there. You're going to have marketing work. Even if we give it away to somebody for free, creating it is not free. And 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 executing on that plan is not free. And There, there is so no I, free lunch. No free. <laughs> and, and so that's what I thought. Then um, the other thing that came to mind, I don't know if you do a lot of reading, but I um, have you read any like Ayn Rand, like uh, Atlas Shrugged? Kind of? Oh, Ayn Rand? Uh, no, no. Okay, there's an expression in, in, in that book that says, if you think there's a contradiction, check your premises and you'll find that one of them is wrong. And I said, okay, so here I am with this free, not free kind of thing going on in my head. And I'm like, I, how do I resolve this? Because it's not a contradiction. If you create value, of course that takes work. Like that's not a, that's not a contradiction in there. So I'm just, but we're in an ethos, we're in a, in a community that values giving away things for free. You're, you have a free channel, you have a free book, you have a free app, whatever it is. And it's like, okay, well, how do I, I have something of value. How do I get it out there? And it's, it's not going to be, it's going to cost me a lot of time to make this work, but the impact is huge. And so, you know, it, it helps with adoption then it helps with all Bitcoiners. So anyway, it's a, it's a, I'm I'm really looking forward to the the El Salvador discussions because it's um, uh, there's it's just fun to kind of think through how to get how to work through these things and um, every time we this is like everything else we've gone through it's 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 just one more step and we have to work through it and figure it out so absolutely uh, I, there's there's so much in there um, as we already know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very, very over the time now. Um, not over the time because there's not really an overtime, but we're already over one and a half hours, which actually rarely happens, um, which speaks, I think, to, to the, to the quality and to the great conversation that we had today. So thank you so much already for that. I usually ask every one of my guests, what can we learn from you besides Bitcoin? But we, I think we covered a lot of the game side of things and, uh, yeah. things that you would have probably <laughs> told in that, that answer in, in that. So like, I think we can, we can skip that today uh, but we have an end routine in the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is um, oh. and uh, the previous guest asked what do you think drives Michael Saylor to be so bullish on Bitcoin so I don't oh wow uh, Michael Saylor getting inside of his head um, he he's very confident again I don't know him personally so I'm just going to He's going to speculate. He's someone who is a very, very first principled type of person. And once you give him the math proof that something works, then he, his, in his mind, that's the end of the discussion and you, you just do it. And I, 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 he, he went through, he's described it many times publicly, what his thought process was that led, led to that. But what I, I'm almost imagining a student doing a math proof. And once they get done with the proof that this formula works, you don't have to keep going. You can just use the formula, right? So 
I think the thing that drives him is he did his homework. The and the and the proof was there. He's the and I say mathematical proof. I'm not talking about like proof of work. I'm just talking about a mathematical proof. And he said, okay, this is. Uh, we've checked everything. We've done this thing. We've proved that this 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 works. That's it. We're going to go do it. And then from there, his his proof was correct. And now as it plays out, it just reinforced that his proof was correct. And now you have other people who are, are starting to catch on to to what he's he's doing. But I, I think he would he was willing to do that whether he ever went on a podcast or not. He was willing to do that whether he ever had his name in the paper or any, anything else. And so I think the thing that drives him around Bitcoin is he just believes that it's it is it's the right thing. He's checked all the bases. He's gone as deep as he could possibly go deep uh, depth wise, and it's just a first principle. He says this makes sense, and I don't I don't think he. It doesn't look like it's any more complicated than that. <laughs> so if it, if this makes sense, we're going to go do it. And if you want to disagree with me, fine. We'll go. We can go argue about it or not. I'm still going to go do what I'm going to go do. <laughs> so um, I don't think he. Um, I don't think he cares now if someone else disagrees with him. I, I think so. yeah, it, it, it's super interesting. Also, like what his greater goals uh, are. Uh, someone said to me, he will for sure run for president one day. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I, I would love that. Uh, but yeah, like uh, the, the it's it's fascinating because I, I asked him that on my podcast when he was on, on my podcast, um, uh, what Bitcoin did to him. And he said, uh, Bitcoin gave me a second life. Like he was like, he, he said he was ready to retire. He was ready to, uh, because like he's no, no longer the CEO. And that plan was beginning before he even uh, got to Bitcoin that he really retires and CEO. That's like a five year plan that he, he built. Uh, so he was kind of like in the, in the movement of retiring and and laying a little back in life and and he said bitcoin gave him a, a second life a second passion something uh to pursue uh af, after micro strategy and i think that's 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 really that that was a, that was a nice uh, small small thing that that he shared there with uh, with us uh, and yeah it's it, it's it's pretty fascinating to to see this 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 guy doing what he he does but yeah it's uh, I, I, I like it a lot i um I suppose I'm supposed to come up with a question then for you for the next guest, or we do that privately. To, you know, we, we usually do it privately, uh, uh, but could. you can give it uh, right now also if you if you want. No, I'm actually trying to think of one. I'm like, okay, now now I feel pressured. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta come up with something good. So perfect. Then uh, uh, th then let's end it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Scott, for being on. Before I let you go, where can people find you and ask you questions? So my email is scott at freemarketkids.com. Uh, you can just shoot me a direct message. If you don't remember that, just go to Free Market Kids, the website. There should be a little form somewhere in there to say, contact us. Um, <clears throat> I'm at I'm on Twitter and Nostr. Twitter is easier to say, obviously. Uh, that's Scott Lindbergh 93. And I, I'll have to just send you my Nostr thing if you want to put that in the... <laughs> I'm not going to do my... I'm not going to give you my end pub. Um, but yeah, we're always, always happy to help anybody in the way we can. Um, I will email is the, is the, uh, the best way of reaching me. If you shoot me, if you, uh, if you say something on social media, I, I might see it, but I might be delayed. It's just not, uh, I don't check it as frequently as I should. Perfect. And yeah, thank you so much uh, for taking the time, Scott. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Thanks, bro.